Go to securefreedomradio.org today. It's your freedom. It's your country. Frank Gaffney's Secure Freedom Radio. Welcome back. It is time for our tour Inside the Ring. That is, of course, the title of the prize-winning column written by its author, Bill Gertz, a fantastically influential and effective reporter on national security affairs who does double duty as the senior editor of the Washington Free Beacon. And it is always a pleasure to have him with us to talk about what's going on, both inside and, for that matter, outside of the Pentagon's ring. Welcome, Bill. It's good to have you with us. Hi, Frank. Good to be on the program. You've been doing, uh, as ever, incredibly important reporting work this week, Bill, uh, including a story that I wanted to lead with today in the Free Beacon about the use that the Chinese are making of their new islands in the South China Sea and what appears to be an American acquiescence to them, a form of at least de facto legitimization. Talk about that. Yeah, this is an important story. Uh, There was a hearing before the Senate Armed Services uh, Committee yesterday where the commander of the U.S. Pacific Command, which is in charge of all forces in Asia, uh, admitted under questioning that the Obama administration has blocked his command from conducting freedom of navigation exercises, both aerial and on the sea, around these disputed islands in the South China Sea. And the issue is uh, very important strategically because what the Chinese are doing is by building these islands in the sea and then declaring that it's their territory within a 12-mile radius, they can, in fact, seek control over the entire South China Sea, where, incidentally, uh, or not so incidentally, uh, $5 trillion in trade passes every year. So this is a very strategic waterway. They're trying to control it. And here you have the Obama administration, obviously part of their uh, appeasement-oriented policies towards China, didn't want to upset the Chinese by conducting these operations. Um, uh, Admiral Harry Harris, the commander, made it very clear he didn't agree with the policy, although he did it in a very professional way. Uh, he, He made it clear that he has presented options and that he wants to do this. In other words, he realizes it's very important that we sail within 12 nautical miles of these islands. It'd be nice to see him given his uh, his head, especially at a moment, Bill, as you know, when the president is signaling a much more uh, robust line on China with respect to its cyber warfare against us on the eve of the visit of uh, Chinese President Xi Jinping. Our previous guest, Rick Fisher, was really quite dismissive of the president's current statements as too little too late. What's your take? Yeah, th- here's the context for this uh, this disclosure yesterday at the at the SASC hearing. Um, at the same time, the president earlier this month visited Alaska. The Chinese Navy, five warships, conducted an unprecedented uh, sail to the Bering Strait and sailed within 12 nautical miles of the Aleutian Islands in the Bering Strait area. And uh, this was clearly a political message. Uh, they're they're saying. Uh, we'll go to your 12-mile limit if you go to ours. And here it turns out the U.S. isn't going to their 12-mile limit. So it's it's doubly in your face in that sense. It appears uh, this uh, incessant effort to find in some kind of military-to-military relationship, Bill Gertz, a means of um, accommodating uh, the Chinese uh, or at least diminishing the uh, the threat that is quite palpably only growing from that quarter. What are your thoughts? Yeah, this I had my Inside the Ring column in the Washington Times this week. The lead item was that one of the deliverables that the Obama administration is seeking from the summit meeting is actually to expand military-to-military relations. It's this false notion that if we have meetings and exchanges that this – is somehow going to, quote, build trust. Uh, It's a false notion, and two senior members of Congress have have challenged that. Uh, Senator McCain, the Senate Armed Services Committee chairman, earlier this year said the U.S. should not expand relations, shouldn't send aircraft carriers to China. And Randy Forbes, uh, who's the chairman of the House Armed Services Subcommittee on Sea Power, also uh, wrote a similar uh, letter to the Pentagon saying, look, it's time for a reevaluation. It's not working. This idea of exchanges, it's, it's benefiting the Chinese military at the expense of U.S. security. 
This should be palpably obvious to everybody. It's certainly been obvious to you for a long time, Bill Gertz. I'm thinking of two of your six books uh, directly related to this subject, Betrayal, back in 1999, and The China Threat uh, in 2000. Uh, it is unbelievable that we're persisting in policies and behavior that is uh, clearly only enhancing the uh, the sense of um, opportunity on the part of the Chinese to act aggressively towards us and our interests. Speaking of which, Bill, you also uh, had some important reports on Russia this week, uh, including that uh, they apparently have been inside our electric grid control systems. Um, talk about that and, and uh, its possible implications as well. Yeah, this is another important story that uh, came out of little notice testimony by James Clapper, the director of national intelligence, last week before the House Intelligence Committee, where he disclosed for the first time, he uh, revealed the nation states that are engaged in cyber attacks and cyber espionage, and they include Russia, China, Iran, and uh, North Korea. Uh, But as it relates to Russia, he disclosed what I reported back in uh, 2014, which was that the Russian hackers not further identified, but assumed to be government and military, had penetrated our industrial control systems for key infrastructure, including the electrical grid and the the water system, and that they were using these penetrations to conduct reconnaissance in preparation for future cyber attacks during a crisis or conflict. So this is a really significant story, and it highlights a key vulnerability of the U.S., infrastructure uh, uh, network and control system. Yeah, uh, Bill, um, there was an interesting sighting in Scotland that seemed to be designed to give offense, perhaps, uh, or send a signal at least to Russia. Talk about that. Yes, a uh, a U.S. uh, ballistic missile submarine, the USS Wyoming, uh, made a port call in Scotland uh, just this week. It's clearly uh, timed uh, to tensions with Moscow over the uh, uh, invasion of Ukraine and other uh, threats against uh, people in Europe. Uh, and this is very unusual for the military and Pentagon to publicly announce the presence of a, a strategic uh, nuclear missile submarine in that part of the world. Normally, it's uh, they announce that when the British submarines visit Kings Bay, Georgia. So this is a positive sign, at least a, uh, what's called a strategic assurance mission. Uh, uh, to try and uh, assure our allies that Russian nuclear threats, of which there have been many in recent months, uh, are are being met with uh, a show of force on the U.S. side. Bill, it's so much more to talk about, but I, let me just close with one other topic that you addressed, and that is uh, Ash Carter, the Secretary of Defense, trying to allay concerns that uh, we're unfortunately now increasingly seeing a problem you've been warning about again for years, uh, namely the politicization of our intelligence operations. Talk about that. This is a brewing scandal out of the U.S. Central Command. Uh, uh, A number of intelligence analysts have come forth and uh, said that their reports on the uh, alleged progress or lack of it as it relates to operations against Islamic State terrorists in Iraq and Syria have been politicized. Uh, That is that uh, they've been uh, skewed so as to conform to the rosy picture that the Obama administration has tried to make that we're succeeding in uh, this uh, feckless bombing campaign, blowing up trucks, and we are killing a few of their leaderships, but as I pointed out in one of my recent articles, they have not conducted any attacks, or very few attacks, on uh, Islamic State training camps, of which there are 60, and which are turning out uh, upwards of 1,000 fighters a month, and yet... Out of 6,400 uh, airstrikes, only 19 in the past year have been carried out against these training camps. Bill Gertz, this reporting is indispensable for those of us who are trying to make sense of what our national security policy are and, uh, and for that matter, what their implications might be. Keep up the terrific work you do at both the Washington Free Beacon and the Washington Times. Come back to us again next week. I hope the rest of you will do so as well. Monday, same time, same station. Until then, this is Frank Gaffney. Thanks for listening. From the nation's capital, you've been listening to Secure Freedom Radio with Frank Gaffney. Thank you.